that whole fall we'd run into each other maybe once or twice a week and she was always invited to go out with us after football games on Fridays and she never once nope took me up on my offer <laughs> what is going on you took my baby like I just remember that like I've just had this beautiful being who you told me was perfect sent me home and now two days later you're running away with my child take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is Couples Synergy. And welcome back to another episode of Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online at couplesynergy.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Couple Synergy. And please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transformed their relationships for over 20 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments, and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. And so we created not only an avenue where you can hear about people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub, pour a drink, and share their stories. People like today's guests, Christy and Scott, thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Thank you so much for having us. We're yeah. very excited. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. And this is yeah. one of the last podcasts here. In our home pub. Yeah, if not the last yep. podcast down in uh, the home pub. Jaxie's pub, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Before the new saloon in Colorado is built. Yeah. So th- We'll be in the same chairs is... in the new saloon. Oh, yeah. We are bringing the stool. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. We will... Uh, We'll update you the next time that we are broadcasting in the new saloon. And thanks to Christy. Yeah, thanks to Christy. Oh, thank you. It was Who absolutely sold pleasure. our home. <laughs> <laughs> I will say one of the um, most exciting homes to sell. This pub is one of the most unique, beautiful examples of a couple's dream of what they want in their home. And it's just perfect. Oh, it awesome. definitely is. Yes. I mean, this was, uh, you know, building from the heart, really. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, you know, Gene and I, we, we put each brick on the wall. Those are all half inch brick face all over. Um, you well, spray painted each tile. Yep. My, I couldn't feel, feel my finger for a month. Right. We cleared <laughs> out all of the copper paint in surrounding <laughs> Home Depot and Menards. Yeah. <laughs> And the stained glass is beautiful. And the stained glass, yeah. The Jean did herself. That's you know, you incredible. asked earlier, like, are we sad to leave? You know, and I think I don't think we're feeling it. Like mm. we're trying not to feel, I think. No, it, it's it's um closing a chapter, yeah. right? And opening but up a new one. But we've had some great times now. Oh, amazing times. Yeah, if these walls could talk, <laughs> that's for sure. They used to talk. <laughs> there used to be dollar bills all over. Oh. You probably saw that. I did when in the I first beginning. came down, yep. And we still have those. And those are, that's a memory of every oh, night that was down here. Yeah. I mean, it's like over $600 in dollar <laughs> oh, bills. <wow. laughs> it was like a stack, like yeah. this big. It was. Yeah, trying to take each one down and finding them too because yeah. they were like all over the place and hidden. Mm. There was one taped to the toilet, actually. We had to get rid of that one. <laughs> I just found one the other day on the side. On the, the side of the toilet? Yeah. Oh, jeez. There are a few hidden ones still down here. We won't talk about those, but they're So somewhere. I should go on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> a, little, a little surprise. I think yeah. uh, Matt Mitchell mm. put those up. Oh, Okay. Or I don't Ryan. even know where they are. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, welcome to our podcast, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you. Yeah. So um, why don't we start a little bit with um, how old are you guys? What do you do for a living and how long have you been together? You can start. All right. Um, this is a big year. I turned 40 in... August. One month from today. Oh, when's your birthday? 24th. 
Yours is the 20th. I turned 50 on the 20th. Oh, yeah. Big year for you, too. Yeah, big, <laughs> big year, yeah. So um, entering a new chapter maybe this this year. Um, I uh, I grew up in the north suburbs here, but I, I've been teaching at Stevenson High School for the last... Well, I'm getting ready to start my 18th year. Okay. So I've been there for quite a while. I teach uh, physical education, and I coach cross-country and track. Great. And that is kind of where we met. Not kind of. It is where we met. That's where I met. So she came. Hold on. I've oh. I'm got to give my age here. <laughs> okay. I'm 22. No, just kidding. Um, I am uh, I'm 42 years old. Um, and I now am a realtor um, here in the Wakanda and surrounding areas. And before that, um, I did a lot of things, which is of kind things. of how we met. Um, I first was a teacher and I taught special education. And I also have um, a sports medicine license um, that I maintain as well. Um, but how we met was when I started to work for the Chicago Bears and the Chicago Blackhawks at the same time. Oh. Um, I was um, in charge of Staley the Bear, the mascot for the Chicago Bears. Really? I was. I did their <clears> school <throat> shows um, and went into schools with Staley and then got to be on the field on Sundays, which was great. And then... When they had it, which now long, no longer exists, um, I was on the ice crew for the Chicago Blackhawks. The cool. ice crew. Yep. So I was one of the, the girls shovelers. that shoveled. Yes, I was a shoveler. <laughs> um, it was amazing. They don't do that anymore? No, they, yeah, they the got Blackhawks. Some, some teams some still teams. do. The Blackhawks got... They stopped it, yeah. Got rid of it. Unfortunately. And mm. then um, while I was doing that, um, I went to work uh, for just a couple seasons at Stevenson High School working in their sports medicine department, taking um, care of some of the student athletes. Mm. And that's how it all began. Oh. So tell us the story of how you guys met. Yeah, go for younger guys. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> I, I was coaching in the fall at the time, and... Uh, I, I was at, I was working all the football games, just trying to pick up some extra coin. And um, that whole fall, we'd run into each other maybe once or twice a week. And she was always invited to go out with us after football games on Fridays or whatever else was going on with some of the us other young teachers and coaches. And she never once nope. took me up on my <laughs> offer. Uh, Were I, you specifically <laughs> inviting her? <laughs> Well, it was always like the group invite. Hey, come on uh-huh. out with us. It was me one of, and, one of those. One like, other athletic training. <laughs> yeah, you didn't ask her on a date. You asked her to hang out. Yeah, it was like, yeah. hey, we're all going out after the game. All the, you her join and us? one of the other um, female trainers at the time. And all of us, there was a group of me, of, there was a young group that I got hired with. And we just kind of went out all the time. And especially after like the Friday games and all the coaches went out. So she was always invited to join us. Thought it was a pretty safe environment when it's everybody. Right. Never took never took me up on it. So at the end of the fall, she finished. Um, she finished. She I think that year she worked the fall and the spring season. Mm-hmm. So she had the winter off where she was just doing the other things. And I went down there like right at the end. And I was you know I, I was like hey where's where's Christy where's she at? And um, one of my coworkers, the other one of the other trainers, he who happens like, to live in the neighborhood yeah, here. He actually lives on the other side. Uh, he was like, yeah, she's done for the fall. She'll be back in the spring. I was like, oh, that kind of stinks. And he, you know, and he was, he was kind of poking me a little bit about it. And I was like, yeah, I want to see if she wanted to go out sometime. And he's like, well, let me, I'll reach out to her and let her know you're, you are interested. And then I was like, well, just give her my number then. She can call me anytime she wants. Oh. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> now, now he left out the part where when I first saw him, oh. he was coaching cross country. And the girl that was another athletic trainer with me, she knew Scott um, previously. We went to college together. They went to college together. And um, so he walked in and he's like this glistening, like covered in like sweat, but like <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, no shirt on shorts. Like, and, and he walked out. I remember saying to Stephanie, I was like, who is that like a male god it, literally that's what it was it was crazy and she's like oh well then she went on and that she knew scott and um, i was like oh he's he's really hot i remember saying that to her and uh glistening glistening i mean just gl- it was like the light you know when sweaty, the light when the, when the light like projects Shimmers. from somebody Shimmers. in a movie like it was just like it was beautiful oh. it was a, exactly it was a beautiful moment and so then anyway 
like he said, that's kind of what continued for the season. And then, um, then when I, I happened to pop in a day, um, I had done a school show near Lincolnshire and it was like right after I talked to Adam. Yeah. So I popped in just <clears> to say hi to, to the other uh, Adam, one of the other trainers. And he's like, Oh, you, you know, you remember that guy? And I was like, that guy, who is that <laughs> the guy? Greek God? <laughs> and, um, and he's like, well, Scott. And, he, and I was like, okay. Yeah. And he's like, well, he wants me to give you his number. I was like, what? And he's like, he wants you to call him. I'm like, oh, I don't call guys. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I said, I don't call guys. I'm like, you can give him my number and have him call me. And at the time, I was living by myself with a dog in Morton Grove. And, uh, you know, that, that day went on and he never called. Oh. Why didn't you go out with them as a group? I think I was trying to be, I was in an amazing position um, as a medical professional in that building. And I think I was just trying to be super professional and Ooh. I didn't want to, didn't want anybody to think otherwise, which seems to be a trend, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and so I just didn't, and you know, I'm not, I've never been a big like bar goer or big drinker or anything like that. Um, and so I was just like, yeah, that's okay. You know, I, I won't go out. Did you did you feel something when he'd ask or did you think it was just casual? I just thought it was him kind of being nice, which I appreciated being new in the building, but it was eh, whatever, you know, and, uh, and football nights got pretty late anyway. So I was always a little tired, but, um, yeah. So then he never called me and I was kind of sad. I was sitting at home on my couch, just like, gosh, what should I have done? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to send him a text message. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So I sent him a text message. And then I think he called me. And did you call me later that night after basketball? No. Was it basketball? Uh, would have, yeah, it would have been would have basketball. Been basketball. So we would have been a month in. What did she say in the text? I, you know, I don't remember. <laughs> I, that's a good question. But I don't remember. I, I don't remember it being. I think it was something like, hey, it's Christy. Yeah. Adam gave me your number, told me you wanted to talk or something. <laughs> something silly like that. Very generic. So yeah, you, I don't. I don't think it was very long, though. So you like, did end up contacting him via text. I it's not like she's. Him. It's not like I waited like two weeks to call her. It was like twenty four hours. Yeah, it might have been like a day. Like Adam might have. Adam might have said something like, "Oh, hey, I gave her her number. Here's, you know, she wanted me to give you hers." And I was probably busy coaching or, you know, just you had a game that night. Yeah, and that's why you didn't that, call that's me. That's why I didn't. Yeah. And yeah. then we uh, we set up to meet out or go out for a drink or something just a couple of days later. Yep, we went to. Um, Village Inn in Skokie. I don't know if you've ever been there. Amazing pizza. Mm. Yeah, that does sound familiar. We've been to some Village Inns, but not yeah. I know. There's, the one, there's in, one in every village. Yeah, yeah, the one in Skokie is not like the chain, though. It's like an, a unique, and it's got this great deep dish pizza. But actually, on that date, though, we didn't have any pizza. Mm. He had a drink. I had an Arnold Palmer, and we just sat, and we talked. And um, I was very upfront. I'm like... No, here's me. This is who I am, and that worked, I guess. And you guys went all the way out to Skokie. Well, I was living in Morton Grove she was, at the oh, time. She was living like a mile and a half from that right hole, that right. pizza yeah. joint. So, how long before this date did you guys have an infatuation with each other? Obviously, from the beginning. Oh, he was beautiful from the beginning. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think the first football game, like I said, I worked him. I, she was a trainer. I was like, who's the new cute trainer? Like, like, who is that? Like, that was my question. Like, who the hell is that? <laughs> so um, you guys knew right away. I, I mean, like I said, I was very attracted to her. Um, and then that, like I said, it kind of went on the, during the fall. Like, I, I guess we just, I don't think we ever really had a time where like, you know, she either she was helping athletes and working with athletes or I was never had coach, a good time. Or, or like I was talk. like coaching. So like during our time, during our work time, it's when, while we were both at Stevenson, there, yeah, there was just never any time to like. I think make either of us really, I don't know, maybe like take that first step. Like, Hey, let's go out tomorrow or let's go out this weekend or something but like that. But we went out after, after we finally talked, we went out, what was it? The next night or something? I want to yeah, it was like a, the next, I think we went out like the next, whatever it was Friday. It was two days away. It was the very next night we went out to village yeah. Inn, and then like the next day he showed up at my house with a single rose. Oh, wow. Ooh. And I was like, who is this man? And <laughs> what bad. is going on? It's pretty forward. And there. I knew at that, that is the moment that I 100% knew 
that this was going to be the man that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. Really? I, I, I mean, I was so committed. We, <laughs> <laughs> I made him take me to Kohl's, the store. Kohl's, okay. Yeah, <laughs> big date, right? Big date. Yeah. I'm like, I need, I need a, an, a memory album. Wow. Like I knew, and so he took me to the store. What year was this? And how old were you guys? This would have been. This would have been 2000, um, December, 2006, 2006. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of right before, or like we were probably transitioning, but we used to, if you had wanted a picture, you still printed it at that time. Yeah. Yep. And so we, I, we got this book and, um, we, there's, I, I have it. I just found it when we were working on the basement, but there's like. You know, the first time I met his parents, the first time he met my family, like it was just you like documented oh. it. All. I did, <laughs> I did, and we, at some point, I stopped. I don't know when I stopped. What was the last thing that was in there? But um, this is the same day as the rose. Mm -hmm. Did wow. you know that you were going to Kohl's so that you can get <laughs> a, a memory book? I don't know. I, I honestly, I can't remember. I don't. I don't know if I told him that. That was I think, why I, I was think, buying. It. I know she told me once we got in there and we were looking. I was like, "Oh, what is this for?" I think that was the moment. I don't think she said, "Oh, that's." I think she just said, "Hey, I want to run in here real quick." Like, oh, all right, I don't care. Pretty, pretty easy going like that. I, if you need something, sure, let's go get it. <laughs> and we went. We went out like every day after that or not even gone out but like either he'd come over or i'd go to his house whatever every single day yeah it was pretty it was pretty frequent right away the only thing i think that got in the way were blackhawks games yeah mm -hmm. sunday bears games yeah my basketball games i was coaching so like i, th I mean i obviously busy schedule but i i remember i think we both remember just just staying up really late yeah a lot of nights yeah like over and over and over how and over long did over that again. last well, until we got in, well, till we moved it to Palatine. Yeah, so we got engaged six months later. Really fast. Wow. Uh, let's hear the engagement story. Oh, mm -hmm. have you guys been to the Chicago Botanic Gardens? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't been ever, and because um, you're working all the time. Yeah, because I was working mm -hmm. all the time, and at that time I was it was summer camp for sports at Stevenson. So I was sitting on a golf cart all day, like really getting a tan, but watching everybody, you know, play and doing what I needed to do on the medical side. And he, I got home one day and I was so tired and he's like, um, I got us these concert tickets. We're, we're going out. And I was like, you did what? I was mad. Like I was so mad. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to wear. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like <laughs> where, when are we going to go? Like, and we almost didn't go. And, um, I guess, backtrack a few days before I had said to my family I think he's going to ask me to marry him like I really hope mm. and he never did maybe like a week before yeah. I think you were pretty you were kind of off and I think that's why you didn't really want to go out or anything too yeah well despite and working all so what he left out there was in the middle there he broke up with me between the beginning and that and it lasted like a whole three hours that he broke up with me I something think. like that yes what was <laughs> happening there I just, it was, I think it, I think it was a so, lot too quick. I think. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot too quick. I, I would have been 24 at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, not that, the, not that that necessarily matters, but I think for me, like I knew how all in she was and I really had incredibly strong feelings for her. I just didn't know that I was like ready for that, like ready to be like, yes, this is who I am marrying. Yes. I saw a lot down the road with her and I just didn't, I don't know that. And I almost think it was just, hey, I'm 24 years old. The, the word marriage sounds scary. Yeah, it sounds scary. It sounds overwhelming at that time. Um, and I think, you know, so I, th I think, yeah, I think she I think she had kind of, you know, like, I, you know, basically kind of said, you know, I'm ready to I want to, you know, I don't know. She voiced her feelings and I don't know what words she used, but I think it was incredibly overwhelming. I was like, I don't know that I'm ready to like say that yet. Mm -hmm. And this was probably only two or three months in. And like I said, I was very, I felt very strong feelings for her, but credible feelings for her. But I don't know that I was ready for that term to be coined like marriage. Yeah. Two or three option. months in, that's pretty quick. At 24 and, and 26. Right. Yeah. And you were like, what's going on here? And I was, and I was okay with that. Here? If he wasn't, yeah. you know, that's fine. Like if that, and I remember walking to work that day and just being 
devastated. It was a night. It was a night game or something. It was, yeah. And was. um, and he actually called me in the training room, and said he was sorry, and said we're gonna figure it out, which we did. And then down the line here, when we um, when the day that I thought he was going to do it, and then he didn't. I remember calling my mom and being like, I was wrong. He doesn't love me. Mm. Like, okay. And and then I, it, was, it was what it was. But I was, like you said, I, I was off. Like at that point, I was like, yeah, not happening. Mm-hmm. So we went to the Botanic Gardens and we walked and we walked. And I was like, well, where is this concert? Because I didn't hear any music. And we just kept walking and walking and walking and walking. And we got to the Waterfall Gardens at the Botanic Gardens and... He had his friend Patrick mm. hiding in the bushes <laughs> below the waterfalls. Patrick. <laughs> and um, he, I guess, shot all the pictures of Scott proposing to me. Oh, wow. For the memory book. So I had exactly for the memory, <laughs> memory book. So we have the full like disc of all these beautiful pictures yeah. of him proposing. So I remember he had on these white pants. Mm. And I don't, I, at the time I was like, why didn't I see, and he had a ring in his pocket, but I didn't even notice it. And I don't know, you thinking back, I don't even know why I didn't notice it, but Make when sure he, it was always I on was, the other side of you. Yeah. I was in, <laughs> now you say that now I remember that. That's weird. Um, but I remember like I was at that moment, I was really surprised because I thought we were going for a concert. There was no music and we get to this place so with waterfalls. I'm like, this is really nice. And then all of a sudden, so it was. It was a pretty special day. Um, we actually got a membership to the gardens and we continue to go every year because it's just so a really nice you place. show up at the waterfalls and then what? He got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. What'd you say? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I think I was just in shock. <laughs> I mean, you might remember. I was she, in shock, I think. I, I think she said, yes, of course. <laughs> okay. <maybe. laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Something along those lines. Something along. I think she was pretty speechless for the first couple of minutes. And yeah. Patrick's buried in Jumanji he trying really to take was. his pictures. He, he was. Really was. So the, the wa- and they're beautiful pictures. Yeah, they the, did a great job. The waterfall job. gardens kind of like zigzag back and forth as you go up. There's not very many steps. It's mostly like just kind of angled ramps and walkway. And he was just kind of, he was like two levels lower on the walkway. And and I was like, well, we'll look down here because we're after we're done, he was did, he took pictures of the whole me, thing of the whole thing and then i was like well let's take some like actually like facing him now and she's like what i go well patrick's down there taking a whole bunch of pictures <laughs> <laughs> she only knew that me and patrick had gone out to lunch yeah they had like, i know like they two, two days earlier like my dad was, and i knew he went out to lunch with my dad did you ask her dad i did i did i we and me and her dad went out to dinner man it might have been a month earlier i mean it's the end of the school year i think that it was probably busy, but I went down there. We went out to dinner and, um, yeah, and then we went out to dinner. I went ring shopping with my dad. She had given me some hints when we were out and about together of things that she <laughs> liked, but I think she thought I was going to, I would have taken her with her. I, well, I always, I, I always, think so. no, no, it was better that way. I think what was <laughs> happening in those three hours for you? So you break up with her. He was at dinner at his mom and dad's. Yeah, I was. I remember that because your brother was there too. I remember. Yeah, I don't think I really talked about that with them. Like I said, I think. You I don't know, think so either, but I remember yeah. you were having dinner at your parents' house when you called me. Yeah, because I was already in Palatine. Yeah. Yes, I was. I, was already I don't know. I don't know. What were no. you thinking? I, I, I think, like I said earlier on this, I, I think I was just overwhelmed at. Yeah. The, pro- the the quickness and the progression of, and of then, everything. And then what happens? It, we just talked, and I think she heard where I was at, that I just, I mean, I wasn't ready to propose to her in February, you know. And I was fine with that. Well, I know. I just, I think, I think when we were, when we were at that point, um, I, I, that was the impression, I think, the feelings that I had, that I was being, being kind of nudged towards that. And I Early. was just, er, earlier than I was ready to. And but, I think, but how did you get to three hours later? Okay, I'm in. I don't know. I remember being. He was he was upset when he called. I know he where I was really at because I was you were working, but I was work I was scouting. Oh, I think you were at your parents' no, house. I was, but I ended up calling you back from the parking lot at Buffalo Grove High School because hmm. I had to go scout for the playoffs. Hmm. 
so I know, cause I know I was like, I really have, you know, we talked and I know she was like, well, I gotta go. I'm working or doing this. And I'm like, I gotta go in there too. I gotta, you know, but I, I, I remember it being fair. Like I was, I remember being really stressed out about it cause I really cared for her and I wanted her to know that. I just kind of, I just really needed her to know where, where I was at. Mm-hmm. And I think once we actually got to talk, we figured it out. Once that time was made yeah. to, to have that conversation. Yeah. So it took you another three months then, and then you were ready. So that was three months in. I think that was in like the end of February, which would line up with where I was at. Yeah. Like th- that time. Mm-hmm. So I think that was at the end of February. So like, yeah, I mean, two and a half months. And in. we got engaged, but then we didn't get married. We got married 13 months. After 13 we got months married. after we got engaged. So we had a, I mean, that's kind of long, right? 13 month wait. A year, I think that's pretty standard. I don't know. <laughs> we wanted a summer wedding, so we wanted a summer kinda, wedding, <laughs> and we weren't going to do it in a one month. So. Yeah, <laughs> but she, uh, yeah, she said yes, and then we moved. She moved in to my condo shortly thereafter. Palatine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys didn't live together before getting engaged. No, we no. Did not. Okay, was that uh, a, a conscious act? Yes. Okay. Yep, it was. Some familial stuff there. Uh-huh. That was the, the right thing to do. So we, we did that. And then we stayed in Palatine for a little bit. And it was a good starter place. And then mm-hmm. soon after, we our next stop after that was here in Wakanda. Yeah, we were in Palatine for three years. So what was it about each other that you fell in love with? You can go first. No, oh, I was waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> um, I... So I've already said what it, I was very attracted to her physically. I think she's very beautiful still to this day. Um, and she gets told that every day. Um, but her and I have a lot of similar interests. Not everything, which I think is a, is a healthy thing. But um, we're, she loves fantasy football. Mm-hmm. So do I. She loves football, yes. being a trainer and being around it. So uh, we have a lot of things that we enjoy together. But... Um, I think, I think she challenges me, um, intellectually. Uh, I think we're, I think we both have a lot of similar desires of, even if it's in like the basement project or doing things at our house, we, we, we have the same drive, um, to get a lot of that done. But I think, you know, she's, she's not, I think something that gets me, it's, it's getting me more over time, but She's not someone where you like you leave the party and go, oh man, that person. She's they're hilarious, but she she has moments where I just lose it over just like the stupidest comment. <laughs> but she, like I said, she makes me laugh. She challenges me. Um, she's incredible. Like I said, she's I really like how driven she is. Like we've already said, she's on the doing the Blackhawks, the Bears. She's training, then she was teaching special ed, then we had children and. Uh, she wanted to be the mom and now, and now she's in real estate. So I think she's, it, it, it is, I think it's extremely attractive that she's just driven. She's driven to be successful. Um, so those are, I think a lot of things. (laughs) My turn. Sure. Um, so obviously, you know, Scott was glistening when he walked in the room. (laughs) How could I turn that down? Um, he, um, I was obviously very physically attracted to him in the beginning, but For me, it's really, it's bigger than that. And he, um, he went to university of Illinois. I went to Iowa. So we had kind of that like competition piece, um, football being a, I think one of the big things at first that we both showed, I think he was surprised in the beginning because I am, I love football so much. I absolutely Mm -hmm. love it. And, uh, and so that was, was definitely part of that. We had those common interests, um, But I could tell like he was very thoughtful from the very beginning and I had never had anybody treat me like that before. And maybe that's why, um, maybe that's why I was so smitten so fast because I felt like somebody was actually treating me how I believed I should have been treated my, you know, in my relationships in my life. And, um, and I hadn't been. And so I think that was very attractive to me that, he would take the time and put the thought in to actually do that, um, which was really special. And, um, and he, he genuinely loves what he does. He teaches some of the special education students 
um, within the physical education department and his love for the kids and his passion and his excitement for them when they make their, like their, their gains and things like that. And just how passionate he was about that. Was, I was like, oh, he'll be a really good dad one day. You know, that really just showed me a different side of him. Um, and we were able to have our conversations. We completed things together. Um, we both did the national board certification for teaching at the same time. Um, and things like that where we just, we had those common interests and we made it work together. Um, and we we were having a lot of fun. Like we just, it didn't need to, didn't need to be extravagant. You didn't need to go anywhere and spend a lot of money and we're just doing stupid stuff. Like we did, we did like game competitions and we would keep track of like what games we were playing and who was winning and like little silly things. I think we did a, we did a party at the house once that I had gotten signed up to do this party for a was it bagels or something? Something like that. Some bagel company or something. And they sent me all this free product and then I had to throw a party. And he bought into that. He's like, okay, let's do it. And so we had all this free food and we got to have all our friends over. And then we just all had to do interviews on how we liked the food. <laughs> it's easy, That's right? Fun. It was a good time. And um, a bagel podcast. It was, you know, hey. <laughs> um, it was it was good. And I think that he he saw that I had a lot of interest in a lot of things. And that's always been something I, I do have a very, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've had some amazing experiences. I've been some fantastic places, met a lot of really amazing people. And as I've continued to do things, he has continued to support me in the choices that I was making, um, which I really loved. And even to this day, when I say, Hey, like, Right now I'm working on a book and he's like, I want you to have time to, you know, focus on that. And I think there's things that I just want to make things in the world better. And he, he supports me in my efforts to do that, whether it be in real estate or with my kids or however we're doing it. He, um, he does that. So how long into being married, do you guys, um, start a family? Um, uh, eight to, t- uh, like eight him. to eleven, from July eight to September eleven. Yeah. So three, three, a little over three years. Yeah, so three years. Three, oh, three years. Three years. Yeah, because McKenna is our our oldest daughter is uh, going to be eleven in September. Okay, was that a, a conscious choice to wait that long before starting? Yeah, McKenna? we. Um, yeah, I think we had decided that we were going to try a little bit earlier, and it, you know, didn't take t- didn't take too long at it for sure. Yeah. Um, but we traveled just a little bit and we were, I think, I think we both knew that we wanted multiple kids, not just one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was older than him. So, you know, the clock was ticking. Mm. <laughs> so um, we, uh, so yes. So our oldest is about to be 11. Our middle one is eight. Yeah. And then our little guy is five. He says he's 21, but he's really fat. <laughs> he says he's going to college. Yeah, he says he's going to college. That's a good goal to have. How is that adjustment to becoming parents? Um, we loved it, I think. Yeah, right? I was going to say, I don't, I, I never, I've never, I think I just made a face, but I don't, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever, like, I don't think there was an adjustment. I think there, I, obviously there was something, but I don't think it was this huge, like, I think I wish we would have traveled more. Yeah. Um, because it's harder now to find that time to just have time. Um, I think we went through, I think we went with having three kids. You have three children, three babies, three pregnancies. I think in it too, we had a very sick dog for a year and a half and I, and then we had a puppy and, and all that too. So like, I think there's, there was, there was some years where, like the traveling has been fairly lean, like just so. I think that it is a little bit of a regret for both of us. Yeah, but I mean, there's good. I mean, I but think it's we always definitely just been it was a hard. change. But it's it's been kind of fun to have those first and be able to mm-hmm. enjoy them together with the kids. Um, like we took them to Disney for the first time a few years before, right before right COVID. before COVID started. Actually, we took two of the three to Disney, 
And we had never done that. Best, and that best was, decision ever to leave the little guy home. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a it would different have been a disaster. Di- different, different type of disastrous trip. <laughs> but, you know, it was I think it was the right time for us to kind of start that next chapter yeah. for us. And I think we were ready to do that. And, you know, we have we have some cool pictures. Like right when we move in here, we planted a a corn, a garden of corn in the backyard. So we have this picture of me with McKenna in my tummy and I'm in like the corn, like being like children of the corn kind of funny (laughs) thing. (laughs) It was hilarious. But like we did silly stuff and that was, that was cool. And I think our kids appreciate our silliness too (laughs) sometimes. Most most of the time. Most of the time. Now you were always used to doing many different things. Was that a hard transition for you? to just go to being a mother? Yes. Um, it was not, it was not as I, as I had planned it. So I left on maternity leave from teaching and I had planned to go back and finish the semester after McKenna was born. And, um, when she was born, she dislocated and separated my coccyx. So I was unable to really walk around. I couldn't even sit down um, for a couple months after. And I couldn't really go back to teaching because, you know, you, at that time it was teaching was still not. Now it's a little bit more casual dress, I think. But at that time it was still dress up, heels, all that. And I couldn't I couldn't do it. And so I, I abruptly had to leave. And then I was home all the time. Um, and I had never had that before. So that was a little bit different because I was always used to being helping somebody. And I had, obviously I had McKenna, which was amazing. And she was a really great baby when the colic wasn't happening, but, um, (laughs) she was, um, she screamed about 19 hours a day Oh, eight or nine months for eight or nine months. Um, we love her to death, but it was a, it was a rough beginning. And so I went from, teaching special ed and seeing like a positive result to coming home and being with a baby that while she was wonderful in her happy moments, she was not happy others. Chal- and that was, was challenging. That was a little bit challenging for a first baby, especially. It's got to feel pretty powerless. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It was. And you don't know like what's normal, what's not normal. Is there a problem? Like, and so I think that that caused us some, some anxiety and um, limited what I could do because we couldn't really leave her with anybody. Um, so that first year, I think, or first nine months or so was pretty rough. Um, and we, you know, we made it through because we obviously we have two more, but, um, (laughs) she, uh, once I was in pain and I think that was part of it. Like I was physically in pain. Um, I don't even remember to be honest, part of the beginning because I was in so much pain and I was trying to take care of her. And then when we kind of got things figured out um and I could you know walk and sit and all that again it made my life a little bit easier um, it made it easier to take care of her but it definitely was a change for me and I was probably stressed a lot of the time we have pictures of us where we just both have these black circles from I remember I I have never been that tired before or since yeah just every night for months on end of just waking up every hour, every two hours, like just never having a, having a night like straight through. Yeah. How did that uh, period of time affect the two of you? I don't know that I remember. Yeah. It's I pretty think, bad. I think it was a, I think it was a survival mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. And then we, I think once we, once we got through that, like eight months, it was, I think it was pretty good again. Like it was like, it, it was, it just, I think it was like just uh, absorbent amount of relief at that point because I think we were we were sleeping again <laughs> yeah we were sleeping again we had time mm. I mean and Skya was born the kid that the McKenna mm. and Skya are 26 months apart so um we obviously were willing to have another one right to <laughs> I like to say you know she and she was the opposite of McKenna so she slept all the time yeah, she slept through the night like like four weeks in. She slept like six almost hours all day. Like, she slept great. at night. We were like, <laughs> now we were like, what's wrong with her, right? Because <laughs> we weren't used to that. And um, 
it's just did you guys feel like a team when you were going through that major stress or did you kind of turn on each other or feel isolated? I mean, I think, I think we felt like a team because I, I do think we were doing it together. I do think she felt isolated a little bit during the days mm-hmm. just because I would go. He would be at work. Yeah, I'd be at work from, you know, 6.30, 7 till. And I couldn't talk on the phone with McKenna crying or, you yeah. know, and it was, it was a weird time, I think. Yeah. I think that the bigger moment where I think I, we really, I would say felt the closest together was, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when, when Cashton, our, our youngest was born, he's five now. And, um, I was, um, at a photo shoot at a house. Um, and I went into labor a month early And my photographer literally walked in and I was on the couch like, I need you to shoot this house because I got to (laughs) go. Same same photographer that shot your house, actually. And uh, and he's like, oh, gosh, okay." Um, And he didn't have kids himself, so he was he didn't know what to do. And uh, so he shot the house. Uh, It sold quickly, which was great. Um, But I uh, I went home and I'm like this is not good. You know, and the doctor's like, yeah, you know, it's early. You're fine. Like whatever. Well, two in the morning hit and I, I was like in the bathtub. I I just was, I was miserable. And we're like, finally we're like, we got to go. We got to go to the hospital. And, um, it was February 24th, my dad's birthday. He shares a birthday with my son, which is really special. And we called them at 2 AM and we're like, we need you to come now to meet us at the hospital. Cause we didn't, my parents live far away. So we didn't have time for them to get here, take the kids and us to go. So they had to wait at the hospital with the kids. And that was a whole issues there. They didn't want kids at the hospital on the floor at that time. It wasn't even COVID. I don't, it was like the flu or I don't know something. They didn't want kids on the floor. So it was, it was crazy. And, um, and I went into labor and, that was when they took my phone, right? That was the labor. They took my phone, I think. I was negotiating a deal while I was in labor. <laughs> oh um, finally, the nurse took my phone and said, you can't do that anymore. And uh, and so it was pretty crazy. So he came a month early and he was perfect, but tiny. Um, he was five something, yeah, five, pounds five pounds something. And, but he was perfect. And didn't have to go to the NICU. Like, all was good. He's, all his tests were fine. They, you know, they sent us home. Whatever, 48 hours later, we went home. And we were um, pulling in. Or no, then we went We went for his follow-up visit. Like, a few days later, you know, where you go and you follow up. And they just look at everything and make sure everything's okay. And I had, I had commented that I thought he looked yellow. Hmm. And the doctor said, no, you know, let's give it a couple more days. And I said, no. I said, something's not right. I just just run the blood work. So we had to go across the street to the hospital. They ran the blood work. And then we got in the car and drove 45 minutes back here to Wakanda. And we, were, we had a pizza in the car. We were literally pulling in the driveway. We got this call from the head of pediatrics at the hospital, at the hospital, not our doctor, but the hospital, yeah. the, the head of pediatric, you need to get back here mm. now. And I was like, excuse me? I'm like, well, we just ordered, is there a problem? We just ordered a pizza. And she, you don't understand. Your son is in bad shape. You need to get back here now. Mm. And we just went into this like flight or fight mode. Like we left the kids, his mom came, we left the kids at home we took Cashton with us. We flew back. It, like, it feels like it was like, like flash. Like we just flew back to the hospital, which is a, a distance, 45 minutes away. And I remember they wheeled me in an A, in a wheelchair. And Cashton was in my lap. And they took him and ran. Ran. They didn't say a word to me. Yeah. They took him and ran. And that moment was probably one of the worst in my entire life. Like I remember that I remember like he was 
like parking the car or something, right? I don't even remember. He I think I, yeah, I was parking the car because I had to catch up. I remember running yeah. up there. And he and then they they were pushing me. I'm like, what is going on? You took my baby. Like I just remember that. Like I've just had this beautiful being who you told mm. me was perfect sent me home. And now two days later, you're running away with my child. And by the time they got me upstairs, um, he was in a box with a mask on and blue lights. And uh, he looked like, looked like Batman, baby Batman <laughs> in the box. He really did. He looked like Batman. And uh, he was he was tiny. He at that point, he was like, he had dropped, you know, babies always drop weight. So he was like four pounds something. And Scott got up there and we're like, can somebody tell us what is wrong with our child? And I guess his Billy Rubin was so low that so high or so high. He was going to possibly need a full, full body blood transfusion. Wow. Yeah, he was on the verge of having like brain damage or something. From, yeah, from what I from what I remember being it was told. it was really bad. So I'm really glad that I pushed the doctor that day. And we look back at the pictures, and you can kind of see that like he looked really golden yellow. Yeah. Um, but I remember sitting in that room, staring at him in the box, with Scott right beside me, like going, "Is this baby gonna go? Like, are we gonna lose this child?" And I think. That for us was one of, I mean, I think it was one of the big moments in our relationship. Um, that was something we had never experienced. That was something that no one could have written in a book or told you about or let you understand those feelings. And um, I remember they said, do you want us to call a pastor? Oh, wow. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I want you to call a pastor. Um, and at the time our daughter was at preschool, um, at a, at a church oh, yeah. and the pastor, um, from that church, um, came over and prayed with us and prayed over Cashin. And I just remember like, we just, I just cried and cried and cried. And, and he was so supportive during that time. And, um, we just sat there and like stared at this beautiful creation that we made and, there was nothing we could do. We were totally helpless in that moment. And, um, obviously this story ends positively because Cashin is home with us, but, um, it was a scary couple days. Um, very, very scary. And I think that that tested our relationship too, because neither of us had been through that. Neither of us knew what to do, what to say, how to I mean, you can try to comfort somebody, but what do you really say in those moments, right? What mm-hmm. do you what do you say to make somebody feel better? And nothing, really, nothing could make us feel better, I think, in those moments. And no one in our family had experienced issues like that. And um, so now I think even for us, it, when our, our friends have gone through that, we have collectively been able to support them a little bit more because we as a couple walked through that together. Um, I just, I felt it was like a day out of a movie. Like imagine you're watching like a preview to mm. one of your favorite, like Grey's Anatomy and imagine seeing like a woman literally wheeled in and her baby mm. room, like run from her. Um, and I think it made us stronger. I yeah. actually think our relationship was probably one of the strongest it's been after that happened. I would say. No, I would agree. I would agree. I was it was really challenging. I mean to to go home with a really healthy baby even though he was early uh, and then have to come back and be in the hospital again because we were there for another 48 hours. Yeah. So it was kind of, you know, we, I couldn't feed him. Mm, yeah. yeah. Cuz he had to stay in the box. That must have been rough especially hormonally. It was incredibly hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I had, fe- I had breasts on my other kids. That was what I had planned on. And to be told you can't do that was, was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first, the 24, the first 24 hours back at the hospital, his levels didn't change a whole lot. They were yeah. still really incredibly high that they were overly concerned. And then at it kind of, it was at that, cause I think we, it was, a, it was like, it was sometime like midday the next day where they're like, oh, they're finally going down. 
So yeah, it was pretty, it was really hard. It was really hard to get through, but it was a good moment. Like looking back on it, it was a good moment for us to be challenged. Mm-hmm. Did, did you feel helpless as well as much as she did or powerless? It, yeah. Couldn't do anything. I mean, you couldn't do anything but just sit there and wait. Mm-hmm. It was a time thing. He had to get enough light and enough nutrients in and you just had to wait. And they kept testing. Like, I think well, I want to say they tested every hour, every other hour. Mm-hmm. And you don't want your child to be in pain. You know, they kept mm-hmm. doing blood work and blood work and blood work and blood yeah. work. But it was, um, it, t- I think it, it pushed us. And I, I really think that was one of the closest moments that we had together was kind of seeing that moment you know, come to fruition together. And this was your youngest, right? Yeah, my young, our youngest, right. And so up until this time, you guys are just kind of going about life, you know, doing what you need to do. And then it, it's almost like a wake up call. Like this is, yeah, there's something here that's really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember saying, I, I don't know how families that lose a child mm-hmm. get, get past it both as a family unit, as a, as a mm-hmm. marital unit. I, a lot don't. I, mm-hmm. It was, I remember thinking that because that in that moment, I like, and we had our, when I was pregnant with Cash and our, um, our dog shadow had passed away and I had had shadow for well, almost oh, 11 yeah. years. Yeah, almost 11. And, um, I kind of probably sounds really silly, but I kind of felt like God gave me cash in, to kind of help with the grief that I was having with shadow, Mm -hmm. losing shadow. And then being faced with, am I going to lose cash in as well? Was just like, I can't there. I can't take anymore. You know, I I couldn't. And I feel like at that moment, that was kind of a defining moment for us was like at that moment where I just felt like I couldn't take anymore. He was um, there and very supportive. And I know he was feeling that, you know, he was feeling those, those losses as well. And, um, I just, I really feel like that was a moment that made us stronger through that. And and my guess is Mm -hmm. you guys have heard that from other people too, that like when that happens through adversity, sometimes Mm -hmm. it either does or it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. 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 It's a pivotal moment. And some couples are able to bond together and become stronger. And some couples, it tears them apart. Yeah. So three kids, Busy careers. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feed and nurture your relationship? That's a great question. It's really the number one thing that we see with couples we work with, that the relationship is so far in the back burner. I It's hard. It's really hard. We, it's, it's hard, and, and we know it's hard, and uh, I, I wish there was more time. I think... That is one thing that I think we could really do a better job at. Um, and if I was, if I was talking, if I were you and mm-hmm. I'm, and I was talking to me, like that would be one thing I would tell me as a newly married person. Like I wish somebody would have said to me, you guys really mm-hmm. need to make time right now and time once the kids come, whether it's, you know, but it needs to be. It, it's not even just time. It's time that's not the grocery store. Mm-hmm. It's time that's not shopping for home, you know, remodeling stuff. No errands. Looking for a toilet. Right. It's 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 stuff that that is not that. And I think that is that is something that I think we both agree we could work on. And it's something that is hard. You know, with my job, I work 24 hours a day. Yeah, it's there's... I, I, we, I think when we talk about it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I, I used to call them just excuses, but they're real excuses. I think, um, you know, you have, we have three kids, we have limited assistance, mm-hmm. um, as far as watching them. Unfortunately, they are getting better, a little, a little older. older and better. And the oldest one is the most responsible. Um, and then we also have two careers that are not both nine to five. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that is, um, I love that she can still be a mom during the day. And I think that's really important to her and to us as a family. Um, and kind of in for her to, to run the house and be in charge of, you know, and not having our kids be, ra- be raised in daycare. I think that's important to us to raise them ourselves. And, but with that, 
her job allows her, you know, her, uh, her job allows her that flexibility, but it is a lot of, you know, I think at times there's a lot of tag you're at. Mm-hmm. I walk mm-hmm. in and she walks out. Very much what so. What time are you going to be home today? Like I said, and I think the two of us make a really good, do a really good job of making that work. But I what think it, suffers in that? Yeah, mm-hmm. what suffers in that? And I think it's something that we've both been talking about and working towards um, trying to figure it out. Figuring out is hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. That's That's the hardest part like you said i mean literally he'll walk in the door and i'll walk out the door like we will pass in the night you know and Mm -hmm. unfortunately that's we've had a really busy year especially with my job so that it's it's a blessing for us but it's also it 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 takes a toll for sure very common Mm -hmm. very common i know when i was a kid all the moms were home and all the kids were out and all the moms support each other and all the dads worked Mm -hmm. and then it's shifted to everyone's in their own box. Yeah. And I have, um, there's a a couple other moms that have different careers, but different kind of schedules like mine where, you know, sometimes I can wake up at four and market till eight. And then that gives me time, you know, to do some stuff. And, um, there's one, one person in particular who's been awesome for me and, finding her was a true blessing because she gets it. And there's a lot of people that don't quite get that. Um, but outside of that too, you know, most of my friends don't live here. So Mm -hmm. that's a big challenge too, is I've sold a lot of my friends homes. They've moved away. (laughs) Um, I was working hockey for a long time. So I have friends in, in New York and California and Kentucky and all over. And because of that, um, I think my support system here is not exactly what I would like. Um, and I hate the cold. I, <laughs> I hate the cold. I know. Uh, but. Um, I don't like it either. <laughs> I'm more be, tolerant of it. But. Beyond that, um, you know, it, I, I just don't. I don't know. And I, it's like it's hard to have. It's hard to hear like, well, you need to, you know, you should try to do this. Or we even say we should try to do this. And then something will come up. Yeah. You know, like I'll get a call to do this or that, or, you know, we tried to go to the movies the other day and I got a call about a house that I had listed that I had to take. And it's just things like that come up. Um, we've tried to put the phones away, but with real estate, it's a hard thing to put the phone away. Um, because I do, you know, my clients kind of are like my family, you know, my extended family and, um, I want to make sure they're taken care of just like my kids and my husband and everybody else. And so it's hard. It's, it's a hard thing. And I think that's probably the biggest challenge in our relationship would be that time. You know, life always seems to get in the way. Yeah. When's the last time you guys have been on a trip together? Just the two of you. Good question. That silence is purposeful i'm trying to figure out when we went um now we went to disney with the kids we went to seattle with the kids Mm -hmm. years hawaii was that the last time we went by ourselves maybe how long ago was that eight when we have mckenna when we went to hawaii the second time Mm, maybe not so longer than eight ten years. years Ten years. Before kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before kids. And it was Hawaii, and it was beautiful, and we love it there. <laughs> and I would move there tomorrow. <laughs> it's not cold there. No, it's not, not cold anyway. there. Um, and, and, and we had, we went to our honeymoon, was in, in Maui. Um, and I had been, and he had never been there before. I went for mm. football when I was in college, and um, he had never been. So that was kind of a cool thing for us to experience that. So when we got to go again, we chose to go back there. There's something about going on vacation and knowing, like, where to go to eat and what to do and what you, you know, being able to do that without mm-hmm. having to get there and try to figure out all that craziness. It kind of takes that stress out. So we went back there, and um, it was amazing. We had fun. We had a lot of fun. But yeah, that was the last time. 10 years. That's a long time. Wow. Yeah. How much quality time would you say the two of you get over a course of a week? 
No couple, screens, no, no kids, screens, no, no logistics. Kids, no errands. A mm, couple hours at most. I would say in the summer we get half a day, maybe. Hmm. I don't know if it's quite that much. But it's a common story. Very common, yeah. Yeah, and the stats say that couples should be spending five and a half to six hours of quality time a week. No screens, just the two of them. And it's hard, Mm -hmm. especially with kids, Mm -hmm. especially with careers. But it's that quality time. The and the exhaustion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that quality time that's the investment that, you know, kind of keeps things moving forward. You know, that forward progression of what you want to create together in the future, right? And I think it's hard, too, because, like, with our kids, we don't want to miss anything. You know? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss that moment with them. And I think... And both of us have felt that way a little bit, I think. Um, And our kids, you know, our kids have had some struggles too, which have caused some stress and have taken time where it should have been time with us where I've been researching. Um, We've got two kids with um, childhood apraxia of speech. They're in the 0.1 to 0.2% of the population that have that. Mm. Um, I'm blessed because both of them are doing amazing. But um, there was, you know, a lot of research And a lot of, you know, studying and medical journals and things like that, trying to understand. And so even time that we would have had, I think, along the way even was spent with us trying to figure it all out. And uh, I don't know how people find six hours a week. You know, it's interesting. (laughs) We created a weekend intensive for couples for that reason. And the first thing we do is take their phones away. And you, you watch them go through detox. I believe that. And then, and then in the end, when you hand it back, they're like, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. Because they can just feel, they know they're going to turn on, it's going to go blah, 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 with all those notifications. And, yeah. and it's a really amazing thing. We live very unnaturally. We're not supposed to live like that. Right. Yeah. And, and that's getting so much of our, our good attention instead of the person in the room with us. And it's really worth figuring out. Yeah. Because ultimately... That's the best thing you guys could ever do for your kids. Right. Is take care of each other. Yeah. We definitely need to work on that. And that's, and I think we both know that though. You know, I think it would be different if maybe I felt that way and he didn't, or he felt that way and I didn't. But I think because we both know that, um, we've been attempting. Yeah. Um, We're not doing great, but we're attempting. At least we're trying. It's finding, it's finding the time. I think we just, I think we always feel guilty if we're like, Oh, we don't have anyone to help, so we'll we need to pay a sitter. You know, we got three, so it's a hundred dollars or to, mm-hmm. you know, just like it's like, do I need to do that? And you know, I you know, yes, I don't know. You do. Well, yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's it is it is a little bit challenging. So that's I think that's the kind of the goal we set for ourselves this year was that we need to work on that um, going forward. So you know, unfortunately, we find the time when we have to spend 48 hours in the the hospital right or something like that and and then we don't on the other end and i don't know how we got there where we made this so like everything else is so much more important right right well like everything's a crisis Mm -hmm. right Right. and we can always invent something to be a crisis but (laughs) you know it's that investment over time consistent investment that we tend to neglect Mm -hmm. right and I think we, we learned that on yeah. 2016 when the longest time that we had kind of spent together was 20 days on the John Muir Trail. Hmm. And we hiked 180 miles. Unplugged. Completely wow. unplugged. Yeah. Wow. We dropped our son off at college and left like the next day. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> 10 mountain passes. And yeah, that sounds, was, we, we've been out to Muir Woods in California. It's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's just a, a common theme that we run into yeah. and we're constantly talking to people about it. And yeah, it's really hard. And especially at this stage of really your hard guys' with relationship kids. with kids. Yeah. So last question. What is it that your partner does that you know they love you? Jim, you're first this time. Well, I don't want to be first. <laughs> I, I went first last time. Um, I already have an answer, but I want to hear yours. Um, I don't know. 
That's like, I oh, feel like I should have thought about that, that question. Not like the answer. <laughs> um, I think that he doesn't think I'm crazy when I come up with these ideas. Like I want to write a book or like I talked to, after talking to Eugene a few minutes yesterday, which by the way, I loved. Thank you for that. Um, I came home and I'm like, yeah, this podcast thing, it's kind of cool. And he doesn't look at me like, what? Something else. You know, he doesn't look at me like that. He looks at me like, okay, well, how can we do that? What can we do? And that's important to me that he, I think there's probably a word for that, but like, he just kind of lets me do what I want to do. Um, you know, something else came up the other day and I was like, you know, maybe I should go back to doing this. And he's, you know, he's all about it. Um, which has been, has been great. Um, from the beginning, he said, I never needed, like, I didn't really need to work. I just, he just wanted me to do something little. So I, you know, and he is, um, since then, no matter what crazy ideas I have, he's, uh, he's Someone's been all about it. There. there are, <laughs> but he is, uh, he's always been about it. And that makes me feel really good. It makes, it shows me that like, no matter what I do, he will still love me, whether I sell real estate or I teach or I go back to acting, whatever I do, he, he will, he will still be there, which is really awesome for me. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> sure. We don't have to try to do any of that. Yeah. It's just there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, those moments that I know are it's just, it sounds so stupid. It's just like, she likes to bake. And she will completely surprise me with something. And she knows I'm not like, I call her the dessert queen because mm-hmm. she likes to bake. She likes dessert. She'd probably skip all meals and just have dessert Yep. <laughs> where that's probably not my thing, but I have a few very particular items that I like for dessert. And like, just, it's like the little surprise. Like, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying just with like food, but just when she does something little that I'm like, she's like, Oh yeah, you needed some of these. So I just got them for you. Like that it's, and I, I know that's kind of, that's kind of stupid. It's things, but it's, it's like she's, but she's thinking about something that'll make me smile or like she's doing just something little that'll be like, Oh, it smells delicious in here. My favorite chocolate chip cookie or what? Like, like, Oh, that's a nice surprise. Like that kind of thing. Just like, I know that she's thinking about me cause she's doing, she's spending her time doing like, you know, making something nice for me or doing something. Oh yeah. I took care of that. Cause I, I knew you wanted it done or just like, like that. Cause it's, those are like the everyday things. It's not, you know, it's not, oh, I bought you this new car or I, I took you to this plate, like this extravagant thing. It's that like the little thing. Hey, I did this for you because I was thinking about you. Well, Chrissy and Scott, I want to thank you so much for being on our podcast today. You're thank welcome. Thank you for having us. You know, people have been sharing stories since the beginning of time to bond and heal and grow. And we hope that by you guys sharing your story, it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. Very much so. We hope so, too. I want to thank all of you for joining us today on Couples Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please let us know how you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couples Synergy and our programs, such as Relationship 101, the home study course, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier coaching program called Couple to Couple. Look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.